Hey everybody, welcome back to the Super Thomas Bros. Uh, we are starting our first session of Banjo-Tooie, played by Steven this time. Yeah. Um, this I'm is gonna super... be me during the whole yeah. game, by the way. Oh god, going up and down and shit. Yeah. Uh, oh no, I was oh. talking about the, the toilet sounds. Oh, well, anyway, I'm super excited for this <laughs> game. Uh, I I really think that Banjo-Kazooie was the game that we really got our rhythm with the show. Um, yeah. after, like, like Super Mario 64 was the first, but it was kind of like an experiment. I'm very burpy. Sorry, everybody. Uh, and then, then, then we really started to, like, brand ourselves during Banjo-Kazooie. So, uh, I'm, I'm really excited for this. I hope that you can, like, 100% it, or at least yeah. get, like, all of the jiggies. Yeah, actually, I don't think I've ever 100% complete this game before on my own. Like, yeah. I usually give up, like, probably, like, 80% of the way through, but, um, I'm just gonna start on file two. Yeah. So, um, so we're gonna skip this beginning intro thing, because it takes way too fucking long. Are yeah. you cool with skipping it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just skipped it. Um, okay, so, big so shocker. So, is dead. <laughs> yeah, th th that, that's a good way to start everything. <laughs> Like, yeah, Wait, he's go dead. back to your house. Go back to your house. So they could see that house. So what yeah. happened was there was a card game. If you remember from the very end of Banjo Kazooie, uh, Gruntilda fell off the, the edge of the uh, of the castle, and then she like slammed into the ground, and then a rock landed on top of her, so she was stuck. Well, at the very beginning of this game, it's a dark and stormy night. All Banjo, Mumbo, and Bottles, they're all playing cards. And then... Uh, Gruntilda breaks free with the help of her two witch sisters. They have this big drill machine that came out of that hole right there that Klungo's standing next to. They rescued her, killed Bottles, and now Klungo, uh, is, I don't know, he's is, pissed. He, no, he's trying to, I think he's trying to get back to Gruntilda. Um, oh, but, like, he's, he's also like trying stranded. to stop you. I, yeah, I, I, I forgot how that went, but I think he's... I would imagine, I mean, if he starts here, like, he's almost like he kind of is following with you through the game because right. you have to fight him, like, three times. But, uh, yeah, so right. Spiral Mountain doesn't look too good. Yeah, um, um you, you know what you should do? Go up to Gruntilda's lair, actually. This oh, is, yeah. Th this is the same beginning area uh, as the beginning of Banjo-Kazooie. Um, you know, if you recognize it, the Spiral Mountain area. But, yeah, anyway, so... It's a completely new world in in this game it's not it's you're no longer really in gruntilda's lair yeah. so um yeah, you're like yeah. it's like yeah now you're, it's almost like you're in the real world uh um because it's like in all these other ones you kind of go into like these kind of worlds within gruntilda's lair sort of like right yeah and by the way i should mention that we're playing this game on the um um N64 uh, Elite, which has HDMI. Oh, right, uh, yeah. Out. Yeah, yeah it, it, it was between uh, GameCube and N64. They came out with the N64 Elite, and it had HDMI, and it had achievements, and... Uh, yeah, and, it's really weird, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Yeah, totally. Um, for real, though, it's, it's an Xbox 360. They have, uh, um, they have it on uh, Xbox Live Arcade, and Jake uh, let me borrow his Xbox... Or, I guess, let Steven borrow his Xbox um, to play this. So, thank you, Jake. I appreciate it. Sorry I don't work with you anymore. Yeah, but Jake. We're uh, in spirit. Thanks for letting me uh, smash your Xbox and. Right, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna fight Klunga, which is like the first thing you really do in the game before you go into the, uh, you know, rest of the, the game. So, uh,. And it, I, I always forget, he, he, like, he always has some special potion that he drinks. It gives him some sort of power. Um, last time I played this, he w became giant. But I forget if it, like, it's different every time. Like, I think, it, I it, think it might be random. But yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean it's different every time. It well, just yeah, means yeah. it's random. It's just, like, there's, like, three random ones. But, like, it's not like it always starts with the same. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think this time he's gonna be giant if I remember yeah huh I guess it's a coincidence but yeah like I was almost sure um, like you know when I played the game before that it was different you know 
uh, or you know, random. It it is random. Yeah. You just that's see that's the thing about random is that when a lot of people think of random, you know, they think of like shuffled almost, and sh shuffling something and randomizing a sequence. Or I sorry, I should say generating a random sequence and shuffling options are two very very different things. Uh, if you tried to write a music program, and Steven, you actually have some recent experience with this. If yeah. you tried to make a music program that basically pulled a random song out of a hat, uh, out of a collection every time you wanted to play a song, it would not be a very good program. Uh, that's why there's shuffling, which is basically you have a whole, you create a whole list of songs and then you shuffle that list and then you play that shuffled list from beginning to end. So you don't have two songs that play back to back and you don't have songs that are missing. So, yeah, always got to fit a tiny little bit of, you know, computer science stuff in these episodes every now and then, you know how that goes. Sure. Sure. Why not? So, uh, I, in my opinion, I actually think that I like Banjo-Tooie more than Banjo-Kazooie. It's, well, I mean, there, there's a lot of things I like about Banjo-Tooie more. Um, it's definitely more challenging. Um, right. But, um, oh, these things. Um, so these things, oh, I guess it's he's telling you right now. One of his silo. Yeah, silos. Yeah. So basically it's like a teleport, like, you know, you always start, when you start the game, like, from when it's off, you always start right here, but if you jump in these tubes, you can kind of warp to, like, you know, areas they're, that you progress to. They're kind of like the colored cauldrons in Banjo-Kazooie, except they're all linked. It, there's not, like, two reds and then two greens and two blues or whatever. You have a tunnel system, which you go into one, and then you can warp to any of the others, which is really fucking convenient. Yeah. Well, especially um, for this game, because it's just much bigger. Yeah. Um, by the you way, know, we're in the... You know what else is bigger? Um, My hopes for this series. Sure. Uh oh <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Were you, sorry, what were you gonna say before my dick joke? Um, sure. It's all, no. Um, I was gonna say this is, uh, uh, the Jinjo Village. Um, I don't know if that was explained at any point. Probably in the intro, maybe, like, that, like, they came from the Jinjo Village or went through the Jinjo Village or something. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, this is where Jinjos live. Remember yeah, so. Jinjos from all the, there's five of them in every level in Banjo Kazooie. Well, now. They're all over the game. It's not per level anymore. It's crazy. And so this is a King Jinjo. King Jingling. Yeah. Yo, what's up? And then he just kind of talks like, like I'm the ruler of all things here, and you know, but like he just introduces himself like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I want to do the whole reading dialogue thing again in this game. <laughs> in yeah, this that's game. kind of. We're, we're doing a lot of fucking dialogue reading in Illusion of Gaia right now. Yeah. Uh, King Jingling needs Banjo's help to get all the fucking jiggies, you know. Yeah, and because uh, there there's some damage going on in Jinjo Village, uh, you know, it's a little bit more, I guess, incentive to do something about it. Well, especially after, uh, well, you'll see. Right. Yeah. Jiggy who? What the fuck is that thing that he's petting anyway? Like, I don't know. I, I like looks it. Looks like a though. looks like a yam. It's from uh, it's actually a reused model from Banjo Kazooie. What was it in Banjo Kazooie? It was this dude in Gobi's Valley. He, I I don't know how to describe him. I think he was wearing like a turban thing or whatever. Um. He, he it was his pet in that game oh yeah that's right yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know why J fucking Jiggy Wiggy has it now oh yeah he's just talking about a strange Jingling. pet thingy yeah it was cool meanwhile <laughs> on top of a mountain should I skip this or uh cause I don't know how long this cutscene is I think it's pretty long alright Okay, so if I turn around now, um, a lot of shit happened in the cutscene. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Wait, go inside, go inside. Yeah. Um, so, so they have this death ray, I guess. And they also <laughs> turn King Jingling into a zombie, I guess. Oh, God. What and, a fucking nightmare. Yeah, so this game, is it's a lot more hardcore. Like, instead of, like, just kidnapping the sister, like, it's like, he, she already killed Bottles, and then, like, zapped the king of Jinjos. Yeah, so we haven't um, actually even seen I, any of the fucking witches yet. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Gruntilda has these two sisters. One of them is, like, short and fat, and one of them is, like, skinny. And Gruntilda herself is now a skeleton, because she was trapped under the fucking ground for, like, two or three years or whatever. Um, and so now she's all, well, I was gonna say skin and bones, but now she's just all bones. bones. Um, so basically they have this death ray at the top of that mountain that it showed, and the death ray sucks the life force out of shit, you know, in the ground. And so, like, she got some of the life force from King Jingling, and now King Jingling's a fucking zombie, and Gratilda's one step closer to being her regular green self again. Um, by the way, I'm in Bottle's house, but he's dead. And so his family's just kind of here, like, you know, it's like, hey, where's uh, Bottles? And it's like, uh, I, yeah. I don't know how to tell you this, <laughs> but, uh, well, Dennis gonna be cold don't. tonight. Dennis gonna be cold tonight, asshole. I knew you'd gotten soft. By the way, I should mention, Steven, the video is, like, incredibly lagged for me right now on Skype. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at it on the computer right now. It doesn't look lagged on my end, so, uh... Well, sorry, but... Yeah. Um, oh. we'll, we'll fix it after this episode. This is the this is a fucking intro episode, yeah. whatever. Goggles. It's like goggles, <laughs> bottles, Mrs. Bottles. And, fr uh, Jeff. Yeah. Dude. Oh, uh... <laughs> raise your hand, anybody watching. Who has seen Dude, Where's My Car right now? Okay, from I'm the people, good. From the people raising their hands, do you remember Jeff? He was one of uh, Zoltan's crew members, and like when they were introducing, it's like this is Zalar, Zolnar, Zeldoff, Sophia, and, and Jeff. Jeff. And then Jeff has a little name card at the bottom, and it's like, doo -doo, doo -doo. <laughs> um, we met Jeff. Yeah, we met one of my one of my former coworkers from Flavorous was personal friends with Jeff, um, and he came to one of the Flavorous parties, and we got to meet Jeff, and that was super fucking cool to yeah. me. Yeah, it's like you guys can meet, you know, fucking Brad Pitt, and I can see Justin Bieber at a sushi place, you know, whatever. I got to meet fucking Jeff from <laughs> Dude Where's My Car, okay? Well, we, we've actually met we. One time met uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy. Oh, that's that true. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that's a pretty good story, yeah. I guess. Uh, it was me, our friend Ethan, uh, and Steven, and we went to Pasadena for what was it? It was like a. Like it was a, a talk about um, the Planetary Society, I think. Oh, uh, and were, the Curiosity rover because it had yeah, like, just were, landed, right? Yeah, it was like like a month or so after that, maybe. Or no, no, <laughs> I take that back. It was. I remember it was like around winter time, so it must have been like a couple months, like maybe six months after. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Maybe it was yeah. like the six month anniversary or or something. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, it was. They were talking mostly about the Curiosity rover, but it was also just generally about the Planetary Society. And Bill Nye was there, and we actually got to go up and like talk to him and like take a fucking selfie with him and like you know we shook his hand and everything. It was fucking awesome. Bill Nye's yeah. the best, the best <laughs> around. <laughs> So, uh, if anybody remembers from Banjo-Kazooie how you had to unlock the levels, you had to go to the actual, like, puzzle boards with your jiggies and, like, put them in in order to open it. This is what Steven's doing right now, except it, it's this. this. So this is what's happening. It's like a little puzzle game type thing. Um, yeah. And there's only one spot. This is the only place in the game where you go to open up a new level. There's not, like, a bunch of different boards throughout the game for all the different levels. It's always this place. Jiggy Wiggy's, uh... What a palace or whatever. Palace, yeah, sure. Um, it's a actually... Well, number one, I noticed playing this on the uh, Xbox as opposed to the uh, N64. Uh, you fucked up. Yeah. yeah, I know. But it's just one. I have plenty of time. Um, 
So, on the Xbox, I noticed that that whole puzzle thing goes a lot smoother than I remember it on the N64. Like, it was, like, laggy and stuff. Um, well, better hardware. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean... Probably. I'm sure a lot of things in this game are faster now, but they're, like, you know... And it's right. in HD and stuff, too, which is nice. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I think that it's a good... Port. sacrifice or whatever you know what i mean like it, it's not really quite like original um you know when you're it, like if you were to play it on like an actual n64 um but you had you get it in like 1080 you know the the polygons are crisp i mean i don't think they did any retexturing i'm pretty sure it's just like you know up like the polygons are upscale it's basically yeah. what we did with um uh, super mario 64 yeah and banjo kazooie yeah, and oh yeah, and Banjo Kazooie. But you can't emulate this game because when the people at fucking Rareware, you guys are great, Grant Kirkhope. Well, you're not a programmer. Your music has always been awesome. But anybody else, fucking Chris, what's your name? If you're watching this, which I know you are, you program N64 games really fucking weird, okay? So you fuck my emulator up. <laughs> um, so by the way, you should these feel are... terrible. By the way, these are warp pads. Um, so they're kind of the like level. Those, yeah, they're 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 kind of like those those uh tube things that are those silos or whatever that um um Sergeant Bottles was talking about. I'm just gonna call them Sergeant Bottles. Um, that guy, that guy that was just talking. Yeah, him. Um, they're like his. Yeah, they're like his his silo tubes, except you could warp within the level like to different areas. So. Yeah, the levels are a lot bigger in this game than they were in Banjo Kazooie, so. Yeah, and also you notice that the notes are kind of in these like bird nests, and along with a bunch of other things. Yeah, and you, you um, get them five at a time too, which is awesome. Yeah, like but before, I, I already before have. Before you, sorry, before you get that move though, uh, we should probably save that for the next time on Super Thomas Bros. All right. Well, let me just get this warp pad here, and then let him, you know, talk for the rest of the episode. Maybe he yeah. should sign us off one time. I know, Sergeant fucking... Bottles. Yeah, Sergeant Bottles, get your fucking shit together. <laughs> anyway, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, um, uh, I'm gonna save that for later. That honeycomb thing. That's uh, a whole okay. thing. Oh, um, oh, yeah, good call. Yeah. Uh, you know what I should actually, because I'm like 10 seconds away from getting the first level jiggy, so yeah, maybe yeah, I should ahead. just get I that. I guess just get that, yeah. Yeah, there we go. All right, right so on. now I'm on the top of the level, and now it's a good place, I think, to sign yeah. off. So, so thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Um, I know that this episode is probably lacking in humor, but that's always the first episode of any game because we like to kind of describe introduce. what the fuck is going on and, you know, stuff like that. So pretty soon we're going to have some really funny stories and, like, actually talk about shit that's not in this game at all um <laughs> so i'm looking forward to that so stay tuned and we'll see you next time goodbye everybody i love you see you everybody i love Bye. you a lot You're, I, lo I love you so much mm. Mm.